in addition to comparing the behavior of the model against historical data, it's important that others have a chance to review all the assumptions in the model. So we have made every equation and every assumption in the model fully available. The model is completely transparent. It's fully documented and the full technical documentation of the model is posted on the project website. So you and anybody else can examine the model assumptions, can critique it, can suggest improvements. That kind of transparency is an essential part of building confidence in the model. In addition, as the science continues to evolve, both climate science and the economics of alternative energy, we continuously monitor the literature. And as new results are published in the peer reviewed literature, we consider how we need to revise the assumptions of the model to make sure that it's consistent with the best available science. One other test that we do is what's called an extreme conditions test. So in En-ROADS, you have the option to vary policies dramatically and to change assumptions over a very wide range. And we work hard to make sure that the model behaves appropriately, even when people make extreme assumptions or impose extreme policies. So that's a quick tour of a few of the tests that we apply to make sure that the En-ROADS model is consistent with the best available science, is fully transparent and available for review and critique by anybody, and behaves appropriately under the widest possible range of assumptions. Professor Sturman talked about extreme conditions tests that we do on En-ROADS to build our confidence that we've captured the equations and parameters in the model well. So I'd like to show you just an example of how you can do your own extreme conditions test here in En-ROADS and then also how we automated it for more extensive testing. So here you have the simulator. What you do is that you move all of these levers to extremes, high or low, it doesn't matter. Push it to the limit, and I'm going with more zero carbon and more nuclear, more coal, more renewables, a high carbon price, uh, I don't know, less energy efficiency in transport, more in buildings and industry, a lot more population, electrify a lot, more economic growth, if you like, less deforestation, less methane, a lot of carbon removal, a lot of afforestation, create a condition where you push everything to its extreme. You can even do that with uh, simulation assumptions if you want, and then see, is there an anomaly? Well, that's a lot of growth in renewables here or in zero carbon. Look around at other variables. What did I don't know, GDP do? Well, that's a lot of GDP. Is that an anomaly? Is there any behavior that doesn't make sense? That is an extreme conditions test. That's one extreme conditions test. What we did with En-ROADS is that as we built the model, we automated that process. So I'll show you, we took 23 parameters and varied them to their extremes. You can see this is cost reduction in bio CCS, nuclear renewables, no new fossil fuels, electrification from zero to 50 or zero to one, and changed all of them in all of their possible combinations together. Thousands, over 6,000 scenarios, and then view all of those scenarios for critical graphs, in this case, coal and renewables, and then see, are there any anomalies? Not just looking for one anomaly, but for many of these scenarios, can we see any behavior that just doesn't make sense? That's what we mean by extreme conditions tests in a more automated way. Hope that was helpful.